Let's add some awesome looking textures using Substance 3D Painter. And each of these objects represents a different approach for creating original textures that you'll enjoy. The workflow will be going from your 3D application into Substance 3D, pinning it up, and we'll paint up all these objects in different ways in Substance 3D, and then bringing it back to your 3D application and connecting those textures. Well, first step is to assign different materials to each of the objects. These materials are used to identify the objects and not just the objects, but the painting areas within Substance 3D. This object, the pin, is divided up into two different areas to paint. You can look at the two different materials. There's the shaft, which is this color, and the pin top, which is this color. And it's not the colors, it's going to be the naming of the materials that is used to identify what you can paint on. The next step was to go under UV, and if you take a peek in the UV editor for this object, it looks very nice, and that's because each of these objects had under UV automatic mapping applied to them. And then the last, of course, is to just export the object. To export the object, I'm going to select this flipper, and this flipper is made out of two different parts. File, export selection, FBX file, export selection. For the target, since all the targets will look alike and they'll inherit the same material, only exported this one target. Now you're all ready to start painting in Substance 3D Painter. And after everything's painted up and saved from Substance 3D, we're gonna come on back to your 3D application and wire up all those textures and build out your awesome scene. This is gonna show how to use Substance 3D as a workflow, importing your FBX models, painting on them, and you're gonna look at four different techniques, main techniques for getting cool textures onto your model. Click on close. There's more menu items up here. We'll get to that in a moment. To get started, go to File, New. The easiest way to start up is just to use the default template. Select your FBX file by clicking, this, by clicking the Select button. This is the file that you'll be working on, the flipper.fbx. You could choose the document resolution, how refined those pixels are, packed in the pixels are, and you can do that now. You could do it during export. After selecting the template, after selecting the file, choosing the document resolution, click OK. And there's your file. Now, some basics of what's going on here. First, viewport navigation. On the left side is a 3D view. On the right side is 2D material view, and we'll break it open to a 3D view in a moment. To navigate, use the wheelie mouse to zoom in and zoom out. And if you don't have a wheel on your mouse and you're not zooming in and out, hold down the Option key or Alt key and the right mouse button and drag up and down to zoom in and out. To pan around this object, press the Option or Alt key and just drag with that third mouse button the wheel pressed in. And finally, to orbit, hold down the Option or Alt key and the left mouse button to orbit. This is the 3D view and this option key, middle mouse button, this is the 2D view. Think of it as the UVs presented out here. To see just the 3D view, the icon's roughly right over here. Since I'm recording this, everything's a little compressed. I'm going to close the texture list and just click close everything blocking. And so here are the full tools of the toolbar. To just show one view, the 3D view, go to this icon and select 3D only. And now you could orbit and just focus in on painting up this object. If you want to paint on the 2D and look at your UVs, then go back up here, 2D only. Giving you an opportunity to paint directly on. This is a great view for painting stencils and decals. So I'm gonna set to 3D only to restore the palettes off on the right side. Go to Window, Reset UI, and now all the palettes return. Here are the materials, and we'll be working with these materials in a moment. Before you get started painting on the object, you have to bake it. Go to the texture settings. Scroll on down until you see the word bake. Bake mesh maps. All you need to know for this go round in Substance 3D, since this is a quick start, click this button, use low polygon mesh as holly polygon mesh. The baking is this process of taking all this information and making it easier for you to paint onto the, your object. Since there's no higher resolution model being imported to project down to this lower resolution model, check this box and check bake selected textures. Those are the two things you would do after clicking this button. And wait a moment. 
That's it, it's been a real moment. Click OK. Now you're ready to paint on this object, put materials on this object. The first technique is just applying material. These layers were created by applying different materials and naming those materials within your 3D application. So that's how these layers come here. If you just want to paint on the flipper and focus in on it, you could turn on and off the eyeball. This is gonna be the simplest way to get started controlling the way your object looks. Here are some base materials. Go to the second tab over, Smart Material. And Smart Material has little extra filters and plugins and procedural stuff going on. And to get the flipper look, I'm gonna use Sapphire. Now, my flipper won't look like Sapphire, but it's a good start. What I liked about this material it has kind of that grungy look to it but I don't want it to be this color. I want it to be a white plastic-like color. Off under layers, just expand the folder by clicking on the folder, and that will expose multiple layers according to underneath this main material layer. And what I want to change is the base color. So click on the base color, and under properties, scroll on down until you see blue, which will be the base color. Instead of this color blue, I'm just going to pick a lighter color. So this showed dragging and dropping smart material, expanding the folder, and changing some attributes of that smart material. Now, if you want to continue and change things, it'd be the same process. You could click on dark veins and pick a different color. If I zoom in, you can see this change. So have some fun and play with these layers. Next part is to get that rubbery look. And to achieve that, scrolling to rubber. There's two different rubber tires. A plain clean rubber tire, and if you scroll over, there's dirty rubber tire. I'm gonna select that and drag this smart material to this object right out here in the viewport. Well, this looks pretty good, except instead of black rubber, I wanted this red to go with the pinball motif. So click on the folder and scroll on down to the rubber base color, click on it, scroll down to you find base color, click on that, and you can pick some other color. So picking colors is just as easy as clicking the swatch and then dragging around the color picker. So I'm happy with that one. If you didn't want the dirt to look this color, then you would go up here and find that brown dirt, click on that swatch, if you want to blend in a little bit more, use the color picker, click on the color picker and just drag it out to anything you find in the scene. Now that the flipper's done, it's time to export the map and then explore other techniques. And once all the objects are done and all the techniques are explored, those textures are gonna be wired up in 3D to build out the scene. Go under File, Export Textures, click on this button. And from here, select the path to save all these textures. I'm placing them in my source images folder. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm just going to call it substance just to keep things organized. And within the substance folder, I'm going to make another folder called flipper because all these textures that are going to be outputted are related to the flipper. Click select folder. So this will be the path. You can pick different templates such as Arnold or if you're going into a game engine, there's Unity, the different pipelines, Unreal. I'm going to select this default template. Now the templates are used to output different files in different ways. All you need to know is PBR metal roughness. It's going to work for most of your projects. And if not, pick a different template related to the project. Again, if you're doing something in Unreal Unity, pick the Unreal or Unity template. If you're doing something related to Arnold, pick the Arnold one. File type, and I'm going to leave it as PNG, 8 bits. The size, here's an opportunity to increase the resolution of your texture maps. I'm leaving it at the default 1024, which was set at the beginning of the project. But after you fill out this information, all you have to do is click export. All those files were exported and are ready to be connected in your 3D application, whether it's Unity, Unreal, Maya, Blender, whatever you're doing. Before we get to that step, I'm going to show different techniques for painting on the objects and then and export those, followed by going back to the 3D application to wire up all these new textures to shaders. It might be a good idea to save this project file, save. And the reason you'll save the project, what if you want to change that color of that flipper? Instead of plastic, maybe you want it to be metal. This will give a way to come on back and 
change the red to some other color, do some variations on a bunch of flippers on your game board. To paint the next object, File New, select that object. I'm going to paint the pin next, and this will show the combining of different material layers. Click OK. The pin will show up. This is the pin broken into two different sections based upon assigning materials on the face level. Just like before, the next step is to go under texture settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps. If you don't see that, just scroll on down until you hit that area. Just scroll on down till you see bake mesh maps. Click on it. Use low polygon as the high polygon mesh and click on bake selected textures. Get some base materials on here, scrub on down through them and pick some interesting ones to drag out to your object. I'm gonna drag out bronze and see how that looks. Kind of like that one, holding down the option left mouse button. That's a good start for this. And maybe for the top, that chrome looks a little too clean. I'll choose, let's preview these two. I'll choose this silver armor. So that's the base layers and the way you're able to drag it onto the same object is because each, because the faces divide up the object. Well, on top of this, maybe to the bottom layer, I'm gonna add steel rune, just like this. And I'll drag and drop that layer. Now, it looks like that layer was replaced, but it's not being replaced it's being hidden by this new top layer. So you toggle on and off to reveal those layers. To get the bottom layer to show through, you'll use a mask and paint out on the object to create openings within the texture. With the steel rune selected, click on this icon, which will create a mask. And I'm gonna make a black mask, which will reveal everything. To start to show this material again, pick up the paintbrush, which is right up here. I'm going to use a regular paintbrush. There are some fun artistic ones that you could go explore. Maybe I'll use this artistic one since I said it's fun. And when you start painting, you can see it's going to reveal to increase and decrease the brush size. You could click up here and just drag the brush size bigger and smaller. Or on your keyboard, use the brackets, left and right bracket will increase and decrease the brush size. Now, if you're not seeing a preview of your brush, that has to deal with this icon right here. When it's full preview cursor, you'll see what you're painting with. If it's in any other mode, such as brush cursor target, you're not seeing the full brush, you're just seeing an outline, or the final one, cursor crosshair, you just see a crosshair. So I recommend being full preview. Just looks a lot nicer. So as you paint on out, maybe you want to erase some of this. How do you erase some of this? Maybe you find it a little cluttered. Off on the left side is the eraser. So the eraser will just bring it back down to the base color, the base color of this mask. Now go back and pick up your brush and you continue painting. When you're done, export the textures by going under File, Export Textures, picking the location, making a new folder, selecting that folder, click Select Folder, and just accept all the default, and click Export. Save your file in case you want to come back. So this technique showed how to combine multiple materials on the same object. And it also demonstrated by assigning materials to the face within your 3D application as ID layers. This will separate your object into multiple pieces, even if it's just made out of one mesh. By adding a mask, which is this icon, white or black mask, you can paint away a layer to reveal the bottom or hide the top layer and slowly reveal it again by adding a mask and then picking a brush and painting away. In this one, you'll explore some brushes. Click on select. I'm going to pull in the pinball FBX, clicking on OK. Go to texture set settings, bake mesh maps. If you don't see it, just scroll on down till you see it. Click use low polygon as the high polygon. 
and click either one of these bake selected textures. For the base layer, go under materials for the base layer. See if there's something shiny. How about chrome? And then I'm going to scroll on down to pick out, let's say, silver armor. That has some nice defects on it already. If you don't like one of your layers, you always could select the layer and delete it like this and put it back out there again. To create scratches to reveal the shiny surface beneath it, add a white mask, and that will keep the top layer, this material on top. And when you use your paintbrush, it's going to reveal the bottom layer. Hitting undo, go to your brush tab and pick something that's scratchy looking. So scroll on down through your brushes. You can start out with this hatching to increase the size of the brush. Option key and left mouse button to orbit around. If that's too intense, just hit undo and undo again and undo yet again. Scrub on down through the brushes until you find one that you think is appropriate. I think I'm gonna try some leaks right here. So you just click and drag that brush and it's a cool particle brush. So as you drag, you can see these particles just flying out and ending up on the surface. I think that one was too intense. Here's an organic one, increasing the size of the brush just quickly drag on the surface. To add some color paint layers to this object, go into your layers and make a new brush layer by clicking this icon. You can choose the brush color by scrolling on down and just picking a new color. Pick a brush, going under your brush palette, Resize your brush using the brackets on the keyboard or right click, increase the size, and now you're ready to paint on your object. You change colors and continue to paint away. When you're done painting, export your textures. Pick the folder and click on export. This last one will involve decal. Decal is a texture map that then you can use as a stencil to scrape it on or something to be rubber stamped out on the surface. It's very fun and will add lots of cool detail to your objects. Selecting the target, clicking on okay. Here's the target by now you already know what to do. You go under texture set settings, bake mesh maps, Use low poly mesh for as the high and either one of these buttons. First material I'm going to apply before doing the decal. Just get a base layer going. I'm going to use Sapphire again. Go under layers, expanding the group to show what makes up Sapphire. And instead of this blue, it's going to be yellow. I go drag this layer above here, just to use it. Another way would be to delete it. Just click on this paintbrush and that will create a new layer. Double click that layer and give it a name such as decal. This first part will demonstrate using an image as a texture to be painted on the surface. And then that same image will be used as a stencil. And a stencil, you could just orbit around your object and stencil in finer details using a texture, which is just a PNG that you exported from Photoshop, Illustrator, wherever else you might've found it on the web or somewhere else. Import the resource and to import a resource, which is just a PNG file, go under File, Import Resources. Select Add Resources to locate the file. I'm going to be using Target Circle, which is a texture of a target. After you locate the resource, you have to define what type of resource is it. And it's going to be a texture, something that you could paint out with. 
Then go a little further down, import your resources to current session. When you close this application, that PNG is no longer connected to the project. I'm going to make it for this project. Every time I open this project, that resource is available. You have the option to permanently add it to your library. So it's just gonna be for this project, click on import. And there's the target. I'm gonna save this as, let's overwrite my target file. To use this, if you're not seeing the texture in your brush, make sure you click full preview cursor. Go to this layer, which is your paint layer, and scroll on down until you find base color. Let me drag this up so you can see it a little clearer. Then drag this texture onto the word base color, this button right here. Now you're ready to paint. You can see that there's a target and I can draw a bunch of targets. Looks a little more like a zipper or a snake or a snake zipper. To paint out one target, increase the brush size. And when I paint it out, it's not gonna be exactly the way I was envisioning it because it's faded around the edge. And that's because the type of brush is that's being used. I'm gonna undo this. Click close this word texture, because right now I'm focused in on the textures. I wanna go back to my brush. I wanna go back to the brush palette. And from the brush palette to see the full texture, select basic hard. Increase the brush, brush size again, which you can do by right clicking and just increase the size. Or up here. And you could also use the keyboard left and right bracket on the keyboard to increase, decrease the size. You're ready to paint the texture, just click once. Click, and now you have a texture on your object. If you wanna use this texture as a stencil, right now it's a full brush. So when you paint, you're painting out that target, undo. Go to this side. Stencil is when you see the image on screen and you get to scrape away to reveal it on your object. To make this same image a stencil, click the, click the projection icon, and scroll on down until you see base color. And do the same thing that you did before. You'll go to your textures. You'll find the one that you just imported, which is my case target. And you'll drag that to base color right here. The stencil is a projection of a layer on top of your object. So scroll your object in or out, whichever works for you. Pick up a brush that you think is appropriate. I'm gonna use, let's say, this bark brush. And as you drag that brush, you can see it's stenciling out based upon the image. So this is a good way to add some worn out look. When you wanna preview your work, go back, just go back to your brushes and there's a stencil. Since it's a stencil, you could continue doing this on different areas of your object. When you're all done and ready to export, export texture, pick the location, select the folder, and click export. The next part is wiring up all those textures that you just created to the objects within your 3D application. You created a bunch of cool looking textures within Substance Painter, and you learned about variety of techniques. You could spend lots of hours just painting away in Substance 3D. When you're all done, you wanna go back to your 3D application and wire up all those textures. Those textures, depending upon your export, will give you a certain number of maps. And other templates that you might use will give you more or less of these maps that have to be reconnected to these objects. This will go over two techniques. One technique if you have no Substance plugin, and the other technique which will be quicker if you do have the Substance plugin loaded. Get to that in a moment. First one to wire up is this pinball. Select the pinball and go under its attribute right here, back to the pinball material. Whatever application you're using, you'll go back to your original texture node for instead of the type being blin, I'm going to upgrade it to AI standard surface and then connect the maps to here. In the next technique, you can see this could be done 
within seconds instead of taking like two or three minutes. Go to the color swatch, click on the connection, pick file, choose the file, and the file will be under substance, pinball, selecting the base color, match the color property. Click on your pinball again. Do this two more times to wire in the other maps. For diffuse roughness, click the input node, create render node, file, pick underneath your folder, the roughness, and one more to go, and that's the normal map. Scroll on down and in Arnold, you would go under the geometry node. In other applications, you'll just find a normal map or a bump map, clicking here. This bump mapping will act as a normal map in Arnold. Click the second property for bump depth to connect it to, to connect it to the normal map. With this done, let me show you a quicker way to do all this. That's by using the Substance plugin. If you don't have the Substance menu, which also will give you this Substance shelf item, go under Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager, search for Substance, S-U-B, and make sure to check all of these. The Substance plugin should be installed automatically when you added Maya to your computer. With both of these columns checked, you should see the substance shelf. If you don't, then you can use the method I just showed you to connect the texture. But watch how easy it is to create your AI shader and assign it to this object when you have the plugin. Go to the shelf and, and click this icon to create a substance workflow. And it goes beyond Arnold. You could choose the different workflows for your various ways of rendering. Right now, Arnold's being used. Select Arnold, click on select multiple maps, navigate to the place where you exported all of your Substance 3D Painter maps. I'm using the control click to highlight the maps I want to connect into this Arnold shader. Once you've selected them all, click on select and apply. And no, you don't see anything happening in your scene because now you have to select that newly created Arnold material and apply it to each of these objects. I'll do it all at once by selecting all these. Right click, assign, assign existing material, and it will be AI standard surface number six. You can rename it in a moment. And there it is. So all that wiring done instantly. Now to give it a much better name, I could call it target AI for Arnold shader. I could use the same technique to create the shaders for the flipper and the pin. Click here, select multiple files, go to flipper. Since the flipper has two different components, you'll do this twice. This is the rubber bumper that goes around it. Holding down the control key to select these three maps. Select and apply. And I'll do it again. Click, select multiple maps. This is for the plastic, base color, normal, and roughness. Select and apply. Select the, selecting the bumper, right click, assign existing material, and it will be AI number six, that's my guess. And select the flipper. Right click, assign existing material, number seven. It's time to give these better names. AI flipper rubber or bumper. One more to go. Same way this was done. Now it's time to apply it. Since this was one object with multiple materials on it, it makes it a little more tricky, but not too hard. Go to your Hypershade, Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Locate the pin shader 
up in here. So here's the pin shaft, the colors match. Then right click and from this marking menu, select select objects with material. And that was an easier way to go reselect just those faces. And now you can right click, assign existing material and select that new material. Do the same thing for the top because the top does have that hidden ridge underneath here. Right click, select objects with material. Then right click out here, assign existing material. And you're done. This demonstrated four different approaches for getting textures onto your object and how you could quickly add those textures back to your objects in your 3D application with your final result being a bigger scene like this. This is just an introduction. Have fun painting and exploring the different materials and brushes within Substance Painter.